Uh, welcome back to the Saturday edition of the South African Morning as we head up to 20 minutes away from 7 o'clock. It might be a little bit early to talk about alcohol, but it's the issues with alcohol, some are saying, is incredibly important. Almost all provinces in the country reporting an increase in new COVID-19 infections. With uh, the third wave very much here, there are concerns that government will impose stricter restrictions. Another lockdown, if you will, a harder lockdown. Uh, these could include another ban on alcohol sales. The industry saying, however, that uh, trade prohibition uh, only led to an increase in illicit alcohol sales. Is that where we're heading back to? Well, let's find out with uh, Lucky and Tamane, a uh, representative from the industry. Uh, Lucky, good morning to you. Last time you and I spoke uh, just a few days ago, there was a call, wasn't there, uh, for the president and uh, the liquor industry to have a discussion about how to responsibly uh, have another liquor lockdown if that was the case, has anything happened uh, since last we spoke? Uh, good morning, Gareth, and thank you for the opportunity as always. So there hasn't been any developments with regards to engagement with government in this regard. Uh, so we, we continue to be sidelined in terms of uh, being party to these discussions. That will really make a difference in the lives of our people, the liquor traders, the alcohol industry at large. Uh, we, we remain hopeful, though, that, you know, at some point, government will want to level with us, they want to have conversation with us, so that we can find the common ground that will address not just the issue of lives, but livelihoods. I think it is unfair that, you know, in this debate of lives and livelihoods, you know, livelihoods always loses. I think we are failing to grasp the notion that, you know, livelihoods actually save lives. You know, mm. for us to really focus on only the issue of lives, it's really unfair and it's really condemning the one million people that are dependent on the alcohol industry for their survival. What this will mean, uh, Gareth, is that People are going to inherit poverty as a result of government's decisions, you know, to further impose restrictions or ban on alcohol, which we feel is, is it's unfair. Uh, Lucky, having spoken to a couple of uh, health experts uh, during the week, and I'm sure you may have seen some of those interviews, the concern uh, is the filling up of hospital beds because people drink irresponsibly. Now, obviously, that's not the fault of alcohol companies. That's not the fault of the National Liquor Traders Forum or Council, but it is a reality. What's your uh, response when uh, we have health experts saying we need to keep hospital beds open for COVID-19 and not fill them up? Uh, with alcohol-related injuries and car accidents, etc. I, I actually saw an interview uh, yesterday morning uh, with Prof. Glenda Gray. And my, my concern about the narrative being taken by the, uh, by, the, by the health professionals is that we are not talking about how many extra beds have been included or have been put into the health system since the COVID-19 pandemic started. Uh, we, we have had to dismantle the Nasrec uh, Field Hospital uh, the Cape Town International Convention Center had a full hospital that had to be dismantled. The conversation should be around what government is doing to ensure that we've got a capacity to deal with the extra beds that are required to deal with COVID-19 pandemic. This has nothing, absolutely nothing to do with alcohol. We, we are starting to feel that, you know, government is using the excuse of alcohol to justify their incompetence dealing effectively with this pandemic. Really, it's unfair that, you know, when there's a problem, alcohol is always pointed out as the, as the naughty child. Uh, Gareth, if we're not careful, in no time, we are going to blame for late trading. I think it's about time that government takes full responsibility of the mess that they put the country in to ensure that we're not better prepared, you know, to deal with the pandemic as far as the health sector is concerned. But I feel that, you know, the alcohol being pointed at is really becoming unfair. It's really becoming a song that is boring to the public to listen to. Really, government needs to find ways and means in which they can deal decisively with COVID-19 pandemic, unless they tell us otherwise that maybe bringing alcohol or shooting alcohol is a strategy that they have in the arsenal of fighting the pandemic. And, and when it comes to the behavior of human beings, especially in South Africa, I, I do think South Africa has a drinking problem uh, considering uh, the illicit trade of alcohol, Lucky, which I'll ask you about in, in a moment. Uh, but what has been widely circulated, and I'm sure you would have seen this, is the social media videos of people out at, at parties, not wearing masks, and that's their fault for not sticking to the protocols. But what you always do tend to see uh, at least in 90% of these videos and photos, is someone, if not everyone, is holding a drink in their hand. So it's almost the optics of the problem, not necessarily the alcohol, but alcohol is immediately being linked to uh, people not adhering to the safety protocols. And it's interesting, Gareth, that we never see pictures of people that are doing 
good that are observing all the protocol. The Russian Air Force always get that mileage, always get uh, noticed uh, better than those that are doing good. We believe that we have uh, uh, people that are not observing the regulations, not just the uh, consumers or patrons, but as well as liquor traders, and we are condemning such behavior. Hence, we partner with no law enforcement officials to make sure that we report this type of people. They really have no place in the, in the, in the alcohol industry today. If they continue to do what they do, government then should uh, descend on them and let the law take its course. We cannot defend uh, the indefensible. Anyone who does not comply with the laws of the country should be dealt with. But also, Gareth, I think it's important to mention that the alcohol industry has done well. If you look at the first of February, when we were uh, moved to level one officially, uh, up to now, we haven't really seen incidents that could easily be linked as key super spreader events uh, uh, from alcohol uh, to COVID-19. So we feel that actually liquor traders should be commended for the good work that they've done, but also consumers should be commended for the work uh, that they've done in terms of ensuring that we support government's efforts to fighting the uh, COVID-19 pandemic in doing good. So really, the issues will always be there, rotten apples will always be there, but we're not going to shy away as the industry, as a tavern sector, to admit that such exists, but we're going to put out you know, those rotten apples. They have no place in our, in our industry, and we're going to confront that. Lucky, before I say goodbye to you, let's uh, try and get to some kind of practical solution. Obviously, President Cyril Ramaphosa is watching Marcel and I on air this morning, so he wants to hear how you're going to answer this uh, in, in finding a solution. If there is talk of another liquor lockdown, we're calling it a booze ban, whichever title you want to go with, uh, and he says to you as Lucky and Tamane, tell me as the president of the country, how do we keep the industry open but at the same time try and limit uh, the perceived damage that liquor is having in the fight against COVID-19? Are we talking about restricting the trading hours? Are we talking about limiting the amount of alcohol people can buy? Give me something practical that people can go, yes, Lucky and Tamani is onto something. Uh, I think it's important to mention first and that the alcohol industry continues to play a significant role in supporting government's efforts to ensure that we fight the COVID-19 pandemic together. Restricting alcohol is not a solution. It's not even a slightest solution uh, that will assist us in making sure that we stem the tide of the third wave. Our practical solution to this is that allow the industry to operate fully, no restrictions. Not talk of a four-day uh, four trading that has been mentioned uh, about, but allow the industry to take full care of its own we, we, we abide by the license regulations that govern our trade. And so far, because of that, we have done well in ensuring that we, we, we stay the course, and not just in how we trade and operate, but also in how we are in supporting government efforts. You cannot get into a place of, of, of liquor or even a place of enjoyment where you cannot sanitize, where people are not wearing masks at the entrance, uh, where people are not social distant. So we feel that you know being targeted is perfect because our people are really doing the right, the, the right thing in ensuring that we are supporting government. Mm -hmm. so really, for us, it's, it's, it's a matter of, you cannot target us because we're not doing anything wrong. Uh, the issue that government needs to look at is the issue of, of maybe uh, uh, limiting gatherings or maybe the issue of care. We feel that those two are actually uh, the, the key combination that we show that we're able to stem the time. But really restricting uh, the trade and really condemning our people to perpetual poverty based on decisions that have nothing to do with COVID, we feel that that is unfair. I appreciate your time, and I'm sure we'll be speaking uh, again as uh, rumors uh, from yesterday uh, circulating that there could be a family uh, meeting soon. Hopefully, you're consulted, Lucky and Tamane, before a family meeting uh, is called and a decision is made. Uh, appreciating your time this morning, National Liquor Traders Council, uh, Lucky and Tamane, joining us on ENCA.